Hello and welcome to part two of my Double Heroines deck tag upgrade guide. Yeah, the, the first one, the Hirana video got a little bit too long and I'm not used to speak for so long, so I had to make a, a cut to recharge. But yeah, let's jump into the Code Piolo deck. And this one has the center, the center Eric Piolok. We have it here. And the level three has the ability at the beginning of your attack phase, if you have three or more cards in your hand, then your opponent target Sydney on your opponent's field gets minus three K power until end of turn. If you have six or more cards in your hand, then your opponent, it gets minus six thousand power until end of turn instead. And when she enters the field, you draw two cards. And she has the once per game ability, declare a number less than or equal to the level of your opponent's center Elric. Look at your opponent's hand and your opponent discards all Signy without a G that are the same level as the declared number. So yeah, we have like a common theme in this deck. It's getting card advantage, making your opponent discard, and you draw a lot of cards. This is a very, very common play style with blue. But you also have access in this deck to, to white because it's basically a, a two color deck. The second blue assist Eric is Madoka. Once Madoka float, which for zero cost lets you discard a card and draw three cards. So yeah, you draw two more and yeah, card advantage. And then the defensive Madoka Clap. And this was a very common defensive assist Elric for the cost of two. You play it in the opponent's attack phase. You down target Signy on your opponent's field. Then if you discard two additional cards, you down two. And when you have a lot of Ana available, you can even like shut the complete field down and pay one blue and two colorless and down another Signy. So yeah, very good against aggro, but in the in the recent Grand Prix, there were like a lot of people playing the the cheaper version Madoka dub. So I guess it's with the current meta, it could be like too expensive, would be my guess. That people assume that your opponent Anna deprives you or Anna burns you, so you you may not have like the the Anna to pay. The resources this would be like my guess because in the previous meta there were a lot of decks with madoka club but uh, in the top eight i haven't seen her i think at all and the third uh, white uh, assist rig is dona dona gives you uh, some coins like yeah there like the first assist level one you gain two coins this is like the only way you get coins in this deck if i don't forget something and she has the enter ability return target level one signal on your opponent's field to its owner's hand so she opens a lane for the cost of nothing she isn't vanishing so she doesn't give your opponent enter and the level two assists of dona costs nothing too return target signy with power 8k or less on your opponent's field to its owner hand so usually a level two or one signy and add target Signy with a guard from your trash to your hand. So again, like a offensive and a defensive tool for zero cost. So yeah, not bad. But let's go into the level threes, I would say. So I have bought two double heron starter deck for for the simple reason that there's one Exia in this deck and she's Quite expensive and yeah, what a, a stable card for white. Because yeah, when she has the once per turn ability, when the Signy on your field becomes the target of your opponent's ability or effect, choose one of your opponent's Signy zones. Your opponent cannot attack with Signy in that Signy zone this turn. And at the end of your turn, upvote Signy on your field. This can be relevant in some cases. In some cases, like with Remember. You, you kind of don't want it because Remember has more power when she's down. And she has the Life Burst effect, choose one, return target up Signy on your opponent's field to its owner's hand. 
or draw a card that's okay-ish, like even if she misses with the up signy, you still draw a card. But yeah, you, you rather want to see her on the field than in your life cloth, of course. But she is a one-off. But yeah, there's a there are a lot of reasons, especially with a lot of acro in the meta or in V Cross. That you should like aim to play three of her. But yeah, for me it's very expensive to get single cards, so I decided to just buy two decks and with the additional sleeper Elric and the other cards, it's I think it's worth it. I also like the foiling more than the SR foiling. The SR foiling in in V Cross uh, is this shatter foiling which I don't like a lot. And oh I should have oh I skipped the pieces. Sorry. So for once we have the for level for two blue summer life blues. You need to have two blue Elrics on the field to play this. And you draw two cards, then put target signal on your opponent's field on the bottom of its owner's deck. Yeah, that's very nice. Not only because it gives your opponent no Anna, but at the same time, even like with trashing effect, there are like some decks that can deal with it, or like especially black black uh, builds which can get cards from your trash back. So in some cases you don't even want to give your opponent the cards in the trash. There are even like some pieces that lets your opponent like uh, get signies from the trash on the hand again. And I I had this situation that I, I don't wanted to give like my opponent an Exia in the trash or Coelia. So I, I really like the effects that bottoms that bottoms cards. And this costs one colorless burning curiosity curiosity. And you can exceed four with this one. If you don't ex uh, exceed four, it's just vanish target signy on your opponent's field. And if you exceed four, remove it from the game. So it's yeah, a way to open lane. And especially like yeah, remove from the game so your opponent doesn't have access to it anymore. So both of these pieces you can use to open lanes, and I repeat myself here, but it's kind of important with this deck to open lanes because sometimes it really struggles with that. Or like when I played the deck, I in the end game I wasn't really able to finish the game. Let me know in the comments if you had made the same experience or maybe I am just not good. <laughs> At Vcross, but I, I struggled a little bit. Yeah, of course, there are these two pieces. It's even like she can, like Code Pure Look, the center Elric, she can open lanes, like she can hit 6k. And you have to be sometimes careful. Like I did a big misplay that just from the routine, just because usually you try to fill out your lanes. But I had a lot of cards in my hand and I was just, okay, I put this there, I put this there, I put this there. And instead I should have kept my hand cards just for one land and then I would have had uh, more than six cards than my opponent. So I would have gotten the minus 6k. But because I just was so in my head and just filled the lane automatically, uh, she just triggered her minus 3k. And I couldn't finish the game, so this is like something you you can learn learn from my mistakes. But then we have yeah a lot of level threes next to it. What's next? We have the Firefly Squid, which has Harmony One White Elric. This means when you play play it, you have to down it, except you down an and White Elric. And the auto ability at the beginning of your attack phase, draw a card. So I would say that you can, yeah, you can order your triggers. If I'm wrong with this, please correct me. Like this is very important. But when you have multiple attack triggers at the beginning of your attack phase, at the beginning of your attack phase, I would say that you can like trigger this first, draw a card with a firefly squid, and then you can trigger her. If you need maybe one more card in your hand for the six, uh, this is important. And when you discard one or more cards by your effect, your opponent discards the card at random. So the random effect is very important because there aren't many cards that allow you to to discard at random. So 
So when your opponent chooses what to discard, of course, he usually won't discard a guard. But uh, with the random effect, you can hit guards. And with some cards like Madoka, like the Madoka float, usually you play her, I would say. Maybe, yeah, sometimes you play her, of course, before your center and before you can play uh, Firefly Squid. But in theory, like, this is a discard a card effect. So this would trigger the Firefly Squid. But there are other ways in the deck to trigger the self-discard. And then we have Miku Miku, Memoria Bacteria Queen. As long as the Signy is awakened, it gets plus 3k power and gains. Whenever the Signy is vanished, put the Signy from your Ender Zone onto your field down. Unless your opponent discards a card. So like some form of self-protection or she, she comes back. And at the beginning of your attack phase, your opponent discards a card. Then if your opponent has no cards in their hand, the Signy is awakened. So yeah, there are a lot of ways to make your opponent discard, so she, she easily gets awakened. But still, like, not one of my, my favorite cards in the deck. Then we have Brynhildia. She is an angel, and she, yeah, she cares about other angels. Whenever an angel enters your field, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. So this would be, like, another, like, self-discard and cycle effect. And when an angel seeking on your field attacks, your opponent discards a card at random. So she should trigger this herself. Like it's just when an angel and not when another angel seeking on your field attacks. So she triggers herself. And uh, yeah, and another at random effect. And the life burst is choose one. You may discard two cards. If you do, vanish target seeking on your opponent's field. Or your opponent discards a card at random. That's a. Uh, not bad effect either. Just that she is, of course, like a bit small with the 10k. Then we have Orochimaru. I I love the artwork. I would just consider playing this card for the art. It's just an, an artwork win itself. Really beautiful card. Really shows like why V Cross is so nice to look at. But let's come to the abilities. At the beginning of your attack phase, choose one of the following. You may discard three cards. If you do, return target Signy on your opponent's field with power 12k or less to its owner's hand. You may discard two cards and a Signy with a guard. If you do, remove target Signy on your opponent's field with power 12k or less from the game. And the enter ability is for one white and one colorless. Add target Signy with a guard from your trash to your hand. So this is again a very versatile card. Like you can use her in a defensive way to get a guard back and at the same time she's one of the very few ways in this deck to open lanes in the late game uh, for the cost of three cards but usually you you have a lot of hand cards and you can make this wor uh, worse, work nicht worse <laughs> then we have Yukimi a card that I really like too level 3 with 12 12k if the Signy in front of this Signy is vanished during an attack phase, it is put into the trash instead of the Anna zone, so Anna denial. At the beginning of your attack phase, declare a number. Reveal the top card of your opponent's deck. If that card is a Signy with the same level as the declared number, draw a card. And the action ability is for one coin, and as I said, you get two coins from your donor. Your opponent reveals the hand and the top card of the deck. So you basically can make sure that you know what's on top of the deck. And at the same time, this card synergizes with Look, Because if you remember the once per game, declare a number less than or equal the level of your opponent's center rig. Look at your opponent's card. So you first have to say the number. And if you pay one coin with her, you already know what's in the hand of your opponent. And if you see like a lot of level three sickness you don't want to see on the field, you can first look with her. On, uh, in the hand and then the ones per game to make sure he discards it and yeah let's go into the level twos oh yeah folklore <laughs> big fan of this card it saves me so many times so we've got like the two coin cards let's put them to the side yeah folklore is a a big 
body were level 2 with 10k, but you don't want to see this one in your starting hand. You want to mulligan it away and you want this to be in your life plot because the life burst effect is down up to target seeking on your opponent's field, draw a card. So yeah, there are like situations where this triggers when uh, the opponent's center Elric attacks or like the last Signy. But I, I with four in the deck, there are like situations or when this triggers and it's the first attack and it really shuts down mm, the rest of the board and can save you a game. So I'm a big fan of this card. It has seen a lot of play in the past today, a little bit less, but I still think it's a great card and a great life burst. Uh, then we have two Brunos, and this is a little bit of a built-in weakness point against the other deck in Double Heroines, uh, because it's level 2, 5k, and as we all know, 5ks die easily to Lancelot or Hera. So even the effect of the card is, as long as the Signy is in your center Signy zone, it gains whenever the Signy attacks, draw a card or your opponent discards a card, not at random, he can choose. But yeah, in general, this is a card that does the things you want to do with your deck, drawing cards or making this card. But in the matchup against Hirana, this is like just an easy way for your opponent to open a lane with Hero or Lancelot. So I would consider to enter this one in matches against Hirana. Besides that, it's just yeah a nice, nice card. Uh, then we have another angel card. Uh, whenever you she has the auto turn two or twice per turn. Whenever you draw a card any time other than draw phase or signy on your field, gets one k power until end of turn. At the beginning of your attack phase, you may discard an angel signy if you do draw a card. So this would fit into an angel tribal, but I really don't want to build an angel tribal. So this would be like a, a signy I would put out. It's also like she can pump, but the fact or like the reason why you you want to pump or you need to pump is it's because it's a 3k. Like we have a lot of signies today that are bigger and i i don't like this at all maybe in a uh, angel tribal deck this could be nice but i don't like this heck it i like this a lot not only because it's inspired from an ancient egyptian goddess named Hecate. it's like a, a frog god but at the same time while she is very very useful she has the enter ability look at the top three cards of your deck put any number of them on the bottom of your deck in any order and the rest on top of your deck so yeah this is a card i really want to see on my starting hand uh, especially if i don't have guards like there were like some games where i had two hackets on my start hand and i looked on the top six cards in total and there were like no guards and of course i bottom everything just to get to my guards and i'm like oh please i hope no not my all my my all guards are in my life plot so uh, this is a very nice card you want to have on your starting hand. Uh, very, very good. I, I like this a lot. And then we have Manumin, a card that sees a lot of play. Uh, I've seen some decks even in the top eight of the last uh, Grand Prix. And at the beginning of your attack phase, you may discard a card. If you do, your opponent discards a card. So first, it sounds not that good, but because of the deck strategy and environment, Usually you have more ways to draw more cards than your opponent. So in the long term, you you try to win with your card advantage. And yeah, even if like discarding cards or making your opponent discarding card, it's not directly like lane opening. But if your opponent has to refill his lanes and he has no, or he just draws like two cards per turn, he has no ways to extra draw cards it basically opens lanes when he has no cards to refill so yeah that, I, I think it's a nice card uh four servants of course we have call out for zero cost spell uh, you can pay exceed seven uh, you can just once use exceed 
seven costs. There are just seven cards you possibly can exceed. And target Sydney on your opponent's field loses all abilities until end of turn. If you paid the exceed seven, instead draw a card and all Sydney on your opponent's field lose their abilities until the end of turn. And the life burst return target up Sydney on your opponent's field to its own hand. I don't like the life burst. And I still do think that this card can do in some matchups amazing things. Uh, I think I don't play her in my my test build, in my upgraded, but I still think there is like yeah, there are ways how to use this card very well, especially for the exceed cost. Uh, if you don't pay exceed, it's a target spell, and a lot of cards care about getting targeted. So then they, you have to put something from your Ana zone into the trash, or like Exia, your opponent can shut down one of your lanes. But if you pay exceed 7, this card doesn't target. It just says no to every Igni on the opponent's uh, field. So this doesn't trigger like Exia or other cards. Like there are decks that build like walls and are super defensive with like uh, uh, Remember, Exia and uh, Coelia and stuff, especially in white. And you can just pay the seven and then everything gets maybe smaller. There are some cards that grow bigger because of some conditions, because there are like 10 or 20 cards in the trash. But this just says no. So I think, and maybe I have to test a little bit with this card, but I think there are like ways to use this very well. Uh, recovery. I don't play this in my finished deck, I think. Uh, you draw two cards and discard two cards, so aggressive cycling. Or you can pay additional uh, coin. If you made a bet, instead draw three cards and discard two cards. You cannot use spells this turn. I don't like this one. I think it's for the it's for the life burst. You may discard a card if you do put target up Signy on your opponent's field on the bottom of its owner's deck. Yeah, I don't like this one. You might disagree, I just don't like it. <laughs> That's all I can say to this. Random Train, I do like this. I mean, the artwork is awesome. And also the, the effect for one blue, you draw a card and your opponent discards a card. If you have the Uchi no Hachimari Eric team, instead draw a card and your opponent discards a card at random. Uh, yeah, this is the team around Tamago. But in, in this case, it's just the discard effect, not at random. And the life burst is nice too. Down target Sydney on your opponent's field and freeze it. Your opponent discards a card. So yeah, even if it triggers when the opponent's Elric has attacked, you still get the freeze effect and your opponent still has to discard a card. I really like this one. And yeah, this was like the regular deck. Now I want to talk a little bit about what I would do different. As I said, I would get two. Double Heron stack to, de to get at least two Exios or like try to, to get three would be my guess. Then always very important get uh, foiled center level zeros. They do a lot, really help to play. What else have I done? I, I haven't made so many good upgrades for this one uh, because I don't want to build it like uh, like one of the control wall decks. Like there are there are a lot of white cards you could add into the stack <clears throat> because they are just in general uh, in general good cards. Like the level ones, like Sao Shun. So this would be like a card I could see to make it more competitive. Like this protects. Uh, itself it gets shadow level two or less so it's not dying to uh, Hera or to Lancelot and there's also this level one which becomes 8k like level one Signy 8k uh, during your opponent's turn you could also include this one to play more into the the self discard it's a big body like a 12k on level 2. And when this Signy is vanished, draw a card. But when she enters, uh, discard a card. 
but this would trigger like other effects like the the firefly the self discard and the life burst is nice too because whenever target elric or signy on your opponent's field attacks this turn negate that attack unless your opponent discards three cards and because there are like a lot of decks that try to attack multiple times like tama white acro decks or hirana this can like shut your opponent down like when when your opponent has to discard three cards and yeah for the madoka madoka club uh, club that as i said there are like some decks that are now using uh, this madoka dub i think i have to look it up again yeah because it, it's cost nothing it just downs one and for one extra you can make your opponent discard a card at random which would also fit uh, there's also the way you can upgrade or build it differently which i think is very cool is because you bought two double heroin stack do it and then you have a second machina so what you can do is that you can either like uh, change the madoka which i could see and uh, of course you then use you cannot use uh, the the piece where am i this piece that cares about having two blue blue l rigs you cannot use this anymore but that's okay you can replace it with something different but then you get access to black and uh, in general this is a very nice nice assist l rig which can you use in a defensive way like machina smash target signal on your opponent field gets minus 12k until end of turn and you can play it in your opponent's turn for one and for one black at target signy without a guard from your trash to your hand so you can get something back but with black you would get access to to this card and maybe you have seen my hirana deck guide i really don't like this card in the rear hirana deck but i do like it in this deck because this is a more defensive build a more control build and uh, I think this is the environment this card do, does a lot. And as I said previously, that I personally struggled with opening lanes with this deck. Even if we, we have like some tools and also like the Uroshimaru, but I personally had some issues with that. And yeah, this would be like an aggressive way to finish the game, to end the game. And with Black, you all also would get access to ZRO2 Natural Element Queen. She has Harmony 1 Black Elric. Whenever the Signy attacks, you may pay 1 Colorless. If you do, target Signy on your opponent's field gets minus 3k power until end of turn. If your opponent has discarded 2 or more cards this turn, that Signy gets minus 8k power until end of turn instead. And enter ability for 1 blue, draw a card, or your opponent discards a card at random. So this would fit super well into the discard. I think I would go with her and with Black. But I haven't built it. As I said, I struggle a lot with buying singles and uh, yeah, don't really have the money. I wanted to, to record this video when I have the money and the cards, but at the moment I don't see it. But I really wanted to share like my insights or my experience with this deck before I forget again everything I've learned. But yeah, very, very nice card. It also adds up with like the, the code pure look, like when even like when you get the 3k and maybe you get then the 6k additional then you hit something uh, or you can vanish something up to 9k or if you get the minus 8k and the minus 6k it's like basically everything dies instead of like uh, yeah remember down she will live but yeah you could like go what my guess is that replace uh, Madoka Clad with Machina and then replace Dona with MC Lion. And I am not, yeah, I, I'm not only saying this because I'm a MC Lion sim, but I am. But uh, and yeah, I pulled this one, which is awesome. But yeah, this is like a defensive that this is in some way it's basically Madoka Clap in white. But yeah, MC Lion Dig for the cost of zero. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Reveal up to one Signy that shares a color with your center Elric. 
and up to one Signy that shares a color with the L-Rig that is not your center L-Rig from among those cards. So yeah, usually you get like one white and one uh, one blue card, like Exia or like the ZR2 natural element. And MC Lion in this respect is for the cost of two. Target Signy on your opponent's field gains. This Signy cannot attack until end of turn. And then basically it's the same way, like discard two cards, target Signy on your opponent's field gains. This Signy cannot attack. So in general, you can, uh, like Madoka Clap, you can shut down your opponent's field. And yeah, this card looks just so cool and foil, so I had to include it in the deck. But yeah, these are like my my insights. I I feel like this deck, for me, makes a little bit more fun to play. Then the Hirana deck, it's a little bit more complicated or more synergistic with the cards. Um, it's it's slower than Hirana. Like most of my games against the Hirana deck, I've lost. But still, there are like some ways to to make it work and to to make it better. If you have some more tips for for people who are new to V Cross or with this deck or with this build. Uh, please let me and the people on YouTube know. And yeah, this is uh, yeah, this was the deck review. I will try to go deeper into V Cross and get more knowledge and help more with deck building in the future. Just have to see like how how to get more cards and yeah, how to mon monetize all of this. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope there was like one or few thoughts that were helpful and see you in my next unboxing or maybe like deck build video. Bye!